you know, it, it's a complicated matter. I, I think first and foremost, there is an interesting sentiment growing among individuals of whether, you know, how to properly leverage the platform that is going to be given to them. Do they leverage that by playing and making comments in order to increase their runway and sustainability about this movement that is happening? Or do they feel like more leverage could be given if they decide to not play or not participate? And, you know, Matt Barnes reporting that last night, I had some conversations with some individuals and it was interesting to see how there was a little bit of a divide there on how they should move forward. Me personally, I, I think the more in front of this, in front of the public eye that you can be, the better it helps you articulate your POV on the matter. And you have to think about the culmination of all sports that are currently happening right now. I, I think the players have more power by actually participating and playing and using the largest platform that maybe we will ever see in the history of sports, guys. We are talking about playoff madness. This is a combination for fans of March Madness and the NBA playoffs. The amount of eyeballs on these collective individuals are going to be bigger than ever before. And we're going to be seeing stances that are taken game by game. Guys are going to have platforms to address whatever issues that they are feeling that are going to be pertinent. Obviously, I can't breathe is one that is the biggest of all time for us. And I, I think the players would be remiss if they didn't play. But I can understand how having this conversation about the power yielded is one that needs to be taken with a serious tone. I think this is a really interesting <clears throat> topic, pardon. Because on the one hand, everyone wants to watch basketball. On the other hand, um, it doesn't matter who your allies are. I'm not a black man, right? So the bottom line is, am I just a white guy who wants black men to entertain him playing basketball and, mm -hmm. and make that a priority? I'm not going to do that. So I have to consider really the circumstances, take that out of the equation and think, um, if, this, if you think about it purely from a social justice uh, point of view, how do you, as you mentioned, leverage the moment because the the danger in playing is I think the best case you can make is if everyone's making money then this moment in time that 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 there's a feeling this could be a watershed or this could be a a real kind of turning point um, instead you don't want it to go back to the status quo and if business gets back to you gets back to normal as much as possible maybe you lose that moment and it goes back to the status quo um, I think that's overridden even if I'm taking my kind of basketball fan goggles off, I think that's overridden by the increase in exposure uh, and, and the kind of amplification uh, and, and, and of the platform um, and, the, and the, 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 the argument if yeah. actually games are played. Everyone is going to be watching. And now more than ever, let's not forget, the NBA is a league that was perceived when I was a kid, to be too, quote unquote, black. And, and mm -hmm. it was, the, the fear was this was going to alienate middle America or white America. And so David Stern did things like have the strictest dress code in sports, right? There was, you had to stand for the anthem. No, 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 we're not going to give anyone any excuses. We're going to present ourselves professionally. And once enough leverage is gained, do you continue to do that and appease people who you want to listen to? Or do you say, okay, now wait a minute. We're going to use this with all eyes on us to say some things you need to hear. And, and I, I think this is the so, time, and I think it actually helps. So that's my best, that's my best um, uh, argument trying I, as much as possible to separate myself yeah, from my think, eagerness to see basketball played. I think mm. I think that it's eagerness to see basketball played bleeding into to your opinion right there because I'm not going to sit here and say that they should not play or anything. Like, it's, it's your money, it's your career, it's whatever. You should do what you want. But bringing this up, if it is about um, capitalizing on this moment, I think that once they start playing games, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're not going to be talking about this moment. We're not going to be playing their post-game comments. We're not going to be playing what they say before the games. We're going to be talking about them playing basketball again and things feeling a little bit back to whatever normal is. So I think that not playing does, I think, advance the cause and not playing for that specific reason. I do think that they also have a ton of leverage. For whatever reason, this reminded me a bit of, I think it was 1964, when the basketball players went on strike at the All-Star game or went on the shortest strike ever at the All-Star game to be able to be a union and to go after pensions. They had success because 
their leverage was so high in that moment because people were so close to getting that game tele televised. I think the players are in another position right now. If this is something that is important to them and they also want to mm -hmm. come back and play, they can use this as leverage to extract some more commitment from the NBA. I know we all view the NBA as the most progressive league and, and the blackest league and the league that is best on their players. I'm not sure whether that's true or not, but they can still get them to make further commitments right now if they want to. I'm not telling them what they should do, but I think that you're absolutely wrong if you think that them Dominique. playing is somehow going to advance. Yes, go ahead, Molly. Dominique, let me get in here quickly, and then, Jay, I want you to jump in. I want you to answer the question and piggyback on that. As a former NFL player, would you want to play right now if you were still a player? Yeah, I'd absolutely want to play right now. I, I would recognize how short my career was and how much money I stood to lose, and it's probably selfish. I I would like to think that I would be more noble than that and that I would stand mm -hmm. up for, for the more important things, but I think I would probably want to play because of financial incentives. It just depends on where I was in my career, how much I had on that salary. If I was okay. in my rookie deal, I'll go ahead and sit <laughs> out. We ride, we ride that on out. But my second deal, oh, we got to play. Okay. We got to play. Yeah, I would want to play Molly. And to address uh, some issues that you brought up, Dom, I, I would say this. You know, when you have to look at the scope of work of Adam Silver overall, he, he has been probably the most pro progressive commissioner that we've seen in sports there is today. And I, I think you don't – I'm not sure if you have to stay and say, hey, look, we're not going to play in order to force Adam Silver's hand to be more committed – to things he's already been committed to. He's shown that he showed that proven track record with how he leads.